very famous critic of psychology I can't remember his name, but I probably will cr criticized the practice of psychology quite effectively in the, I believe in the early 60s The Myth of Mental Illness by Thomas Sazz, S-Z-A-S-Z -S -Z. It's a classic, you should read it If you're interested in psychology, read it Like, it's, it's a classic And he basically said most people have problems in living, they don't have psychological problems And so I've experienced, despite my love for the psychoanalysts Very frequently what I'm doing as a therapist is Helping people have a life that would work You know, and You can parameterize that, it's like, what do you need? How about some friends? That People kind of like that How about an intimate relationship with someone that you can trust, that maybe has a future? That'd be good how about a career that puts you in a dominance hierarchy somewhere so at least you've got some possibility of rising, some possibility of stabilizing yourself and a schedule and a routine because no one can live without a routine you just forget that, if you guys don't have a routine I would recommend, like, you get one going because you cannot be mentally healthy without a routine you need to pick a time to get up whatever time you want, but pick one and stick to it because otherwise you dysregulate your circadian rhythms and they regulate your mood and eat something in the morning I had lots of clients who've had anxiety disorders I had one client who was literally starving very smart girl she, there was very little that she liked she kind of tried to subsist on like half a cup of rice a day she came to me and said I have no energy, I come home, all I want to do is watch the same movie over and over what, like, is that weird? And I thought, well, it depends on how hard you work You know, it's a little weird, but whatever It's familiar, and you're looking for comfort So I did an analysis of her diet It's like three quarters of a cup of rice It's like, you're starving Eat something You know You'll feel better So she modified her diet And all her anxiety went away And she had some energy It's like, yeah You gotta eat so, a schedule, that's a good thing, man Your brain will thank you for it It will stabilize your nervous system With a bit of a plan, that's a good thing You need a career, you need something productive to do with your time You need to regulate your use of drugs and alcohol Most particularly alcohol, because that does in a lot of people um, You need a family, like the family you have Your parents and all that, be nice if you all got along, you could work on that, that's a good thing to work on And then, you know, you probably need children at some point, and that's life That's what life is And if you're missing, you know, you may have a good reason to not be operating on one of those dimensions It's not mandatory But I can tell you that if you're not operating reasonably well on four, I think I mentioned six If you're not operating reasonably well on at least three of them there's no way you're going to be psychologically thriving And that's more pragmatic, in some sense, than psychological, right? Human beings have a nature, there's things we need And if we have them, well, that's good And if we don't have them, well, then we feel the lack And so behaviorists, behavioral psychologists, concentrate a lot more on that sort of thing You know, it's practical, it's like strategizing Make a career plan, figure out how to negotiate, because that's bloody important Figure out how to say what you need Figure out how to tell the truth to people Figure out how to listen to your partner in particular Because if you listen to them, they will actually tell you what they want And sometimes you can give it to them, and maybe they'll return the favor And if you practice that for like 15 years Well, then maybe you're constantly giving each other what you want Well, hooray, that would be good and then there's two of you, under most circumstances And it's better to have two brains than one Because people think differently because of their temperament, mostly And so, the negotiation is where the wisdom arises And it's part of the transformation, the psychological transformation That's attendant on an intimate relationship And one of the fundamental purposes of a long-term intimate relationship